Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I am mastering my final primary weapon in Battlefield 4. It's taken a long time, many, many hours of gameplay, but I finally mastered all 89 primary weapons available in Battlefield 4. That's 500 kills with each gun. If I were only to get 500 kills with each gun, then that would be a total of 44,500 kills just for mastering those primary weapons, and obviously I have a lot more kills with some of the other guns. Now it certainly feels like a weight off my chest, but by this time it's taken so long to master these weapons that some of the early ones that I did have been balanced and tweaked so much that my old videos on them are not necessarily relevant anymore because so many stats and so many things about the weapons in this game have changed, and I'll have to go back from time to time and look over weapons that have seen heavy modification and kind of uh, do an updated or a revisited review of those weapons. Now the weapon we are mastering today is one of the most recently added guns to the game. It is the Groza 4 PDW, only available for the engineer, and it has a permanently affixed suppressor, so you can't run this without a suppressor. It's basically going to have a very slow muzzle velocity all the time. And how slow is that? Well, it's shooting 300 meters per second, which means targets that are far away from you or running, you're going to have to lead substantially. You can get used to it, but it's certainly not something that I enjoy doing, and especially if somebody is dodging your shots, strafing left, right, left, right, it's gonna be almost impossible and you're gonna be missing so many shots that you're just thinking like, man, I totally would have won this firefight had I not been running a Groza 4. So immediately range becomes a big concern for this weapon. You have to get up close in your opponent's face and luckily the damage model on this gun is pretty good for a close quarter combat. It does 27 damage maximum, so you're gonna get pretty much a guaranteed four shot kill no matter where you shoot your opponent. Um, and that's very useful in CQB but further away the damage drops off to 15.4 which is kind of standard carbine damage model or standard assault rifle damage model. It's not going to be too effective at further ranges, not to mention that slow muzzle velocity. It's just trickier to use. Effective on stationary targets are targets that don't move after they get hit the first time you shoot them, but uh, beyond that it's not going to be too usable. Now the recoil on the Groza 4 is pretty darn easy to control, which lures you into a false sense of accuracy, I feel. This gun has very, very bad accuracy, just even starting with base accuracy. Pulling up the SimThick stats, you've got a .45 aiming down sight accuracy, which is just terrible. That's where you start with your accuracy, and it only gets worse the more you shoot the weapon. So you're firing in full auto, you're going to get even less accurate, and that's a pretty big problem. Not to mention it has a very small magazine of 20 rounds with one in the chamber if you get a reload off. And uh, the reload time, the short reload time, is 2.9 seconds with a 3.75 long reload. And you're going to hit that long reload a lot because you only have 20 rounds in your mag. So uh, forcing this weapon to be used in CQB is also really bad because you have that terrible reload time in a very small magazine. The gun is pretty much just nerfing itself. The amount of times that I died reloading this weapon were just off the charts, probably more than I have with any other gun in the game. And it's really frustrating, especially when you know exactly where your opponent is, you've killed his teammate or you've killed two of his teammates, and you're just like, all I need to do is reload this weapon and then I can kill that guy. And he comes around the corner and you're mid reload and you can't do shit about it. Obviously switching to a sidearm is an option, but uh, believe me, I tried that a lot. Got a kill with the sidearm and then I had two empty weapons and nothing to deal with the next guy that was around the corner. Playing games like Battlefield where there are tons and tons of enemies makes factors like reload time a very, very important factor. If I was playing a game like Counter-Strike or any other game that was set up for say 5v5 competitive mode, reload time is not as important because you can usually deal with your immediate threats with the bullets that are in your gun and then you can reload later and deal with follow-up threats as they sort of get closer to you, but Battlefield you are constantly being swarmed, so reload is very important. It's why machine guns tend to do really well in CQB. Now the one thing that's almost the saving grace of this weapon is the fact that it has incredibly good hipfire accuracy. In fact, when you have a laser sight on there, your hipfire accuracy becomes almost as good as your aiming down sight accuracy. In fact, the difference is just about negligible. So if you are running a laser sight, just go ahead and hipfire everybody to your heart's content. Personally, I like to aim down sights in a lot of situations just because it gives me a little bit more accuracy at further ranges, but in CQB, just hit fire away and you should be just fine. Again, you're only going to have 20 rounds in a magazine, so it's not like it's going to make you some sort of death machine, but you can certainly hit fire the first guy that you run into. 
It's a great weapon for getting one kill in CQB, provided that they're not running around or juxing you too much, because with that slow muzzle velocity, even in CQB, it can be a little bit daunting. Now, of course, I did mention the negative side effects of the suppressor, lowering that muzzle velocity to 300 meters per second, but the main positive effect is that you don't show up on that minimap every time you shoot your weapon, so you can afford yourself a lot of stealthy situations, which is what you're seeing in this video for the most part. I'm affording myself a situation where a lot of the enemies very close to me don't know that I'm there because I'm using a suppressed weapon. And I don't want to call these players novices by any means, but I would say that an experienced player will hear that suppressed weapon go off, they'll check their minimap, they'll see that there's no teammates around that could make that sound, and they will immediately conclude that there's an enemy nearby with a suppressed weapon. Sure, it can take a little bit longer, but for the most part when you're playing against more average players or more chaotic server, that suppressor can buy you a lot of time. You just don't really have the option of whether or not you want to use it with this weapon, and unfortunately there aren't a lot of huge benefits to this gun to make it worthwhile, at least not in my opinion. Especially when you compare this weapon with the AS Val, which is similar in many ways. A non-removable suppressor, it's also a PDW only for the engineer class, but it has a 900 round per minute rate of fire, 200 rounds per minute faster than the uh, Groza 4, and it has the exact same damage model with a much faster reload time of 1.95 seconds. Sure, its recoil can be a little bit higher, but certainly not hard to tame or untamable by any means, and it also has better aiming down sight accuracy and only marginally worse hip fire accuracy. So the AS Val is pretty much a clear choice over the Groza 4. There just isn't enough going for this weapon. The only way to really make this gun competitive with the AS Val is to at least lower its reload time. In fact, that's the only way to kind of balance out this gun into a useful manner. It's got to have faster reload or it just becomes unusable for CQB combat. Now we're coming up on my 500th kill with the Groza 4 to get that dog tag and ultimately master all the weapons. And I have to say it is a little bit disappointing that they don't have any like super achievement reward for mastering all the guns in this game or some sort of epic camo that would show that you have mastered the guns and if you saw somebody running around with this camo you would say ah oh, that guy's mastered all the primary weapons in the game it would be neat if battlefield had some really cool like end game goals or end game rewards that you could get for putting in massive amounts of time um, hopefully it's something that they'll capitalize on with their next title until then we'll just have to be content with getting those mastery dog tags and whenever you look at your battle log inventory saying that you have a ton of them. What do you guys think? Should I go ahead and master the sidearms in this game? I mean, I could do it in a pistol only server, but those are for the most part kind of boring to watch, I feel. And plus everybody uses the G18 and pistol only servers, which I think is kind of an oversight for the guys who are balancing out the pistol only servers. Maybe turn off the G18 since it's so obviously one of the best pistols to use in any sort of CQB combat situation. Anyway, that uh, wraps it up for this Grows of Four Mastery video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'd say tell me which weapon you'd want me to master next, but there aren't any. Unless, of course, you want me to master a pistol. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.